Um, I am going to spend a few minutes to talk to you about um, the work that we do at the Kenya Wildlife Conservancy Association. Um, and I think the first point that I would like to make is that wildlife generally across the country, most of Africa, and particularly in Kenya, is found in land that is privately or communally owned by communities and private landowners. Uh, the conditions created by elephants, fire, and human activity creates conditions that allow wildlife to stay in these areas. And as we know in our country, majority of the wildlife that we do have are uh, in, in this community and private lands, and therefore outside of, um, of, of protection. Uh, this wildlife presents an opportunity for those that live there, but in many cases also presents a challenge. Uh, we see that in many areas, uh, there are examples of how people are trying to survive, how tr they are trying to feed their livestock. They are generally uh, converting the land that wildlife uses. We see fences growing up in a lot of these areas. Uh, we see wetlands being converted into farmland, and this presents a critical challenge to the wildlife. We also see road kills on our roads. Uh, we see fences um, uh, in our water holes that deny access of water to uh, wildlife in some cases. And we see generally um, sometimes a lot of challenges uh, in, in this co coexistence. Now, our main protection approach has been to create national parks and natural reserves. And as we know, uh, our country currently covers uh, national parks and reserves co covers an area of about 8%. Yet, we know that wildlife occupy an area slightly larger than 25%, meaning that a lot of our wildlife is out there in land that uh, is not protected for wildlife and living within our communities that are growing in number and also uh, that are changing in their aspiration uh, to survive. In many cases, we have seen um, the issue of bushmeat, being a problem uh, where people who are poor who may not necessarily have alternatives or even their upcoming cities becoming markets for these uh, life, uh, wildlife products. And we see a lot of animals being killed in very crude ways using snares, using uh, torches, using spears, poison arrows, uh, and poisons itself. And, and what animals do generally uh, get to suffer when some of these things happen. Uh, our work as a, an organization has been to try and mainstream the work of these communities in uh, conserving wildlife, in taking care of wildlife, and our major our main approach is through creation of community wildlife conservancies and community wildlife sanctuaries. Now, as we know that the tourism, um, um, uh, the, so, sorry, I think the presentation came a little bit too late, but um, I think we'll just continue. Um, as we know, the, the, the tourism uh, sector does provide an important contribution and an incentive to wildlife conservation. Um, <clears throat> and, and we find that the benefits from tourism largely are not accrued to the local communities. We find the airline, the safari companies, the, West, the tour operators, uh, and, and partly the government getting a good share of the hotel chains and very little percentage of that income uh, actually goes to the communities and in many cases that becomes a disincentive and you find <coughs> communities trying to take very desperate um, approaches including fencing of their land to keep wildlife and in doing so and we've seen that in the Mara for example we see a lot of wildlife getting entangled in wires and this particular wildebeest for example was there for about seven hours and it died later um, out of exhaustion. And that represents uh, such a, a, a big pain. Habitat for wildlife <clears throat> is converted into farmlands as, as people try um, to, to survive. And also the poachers themselves do incentivize these uh, communities to either tolerate or assist or to participate in, uh, in poaching activities. Um, our organization uh, works in about 25, 28 counties in our country, particularly in the areas of the Rangelands, we are a national membership body, uh, and the conservancies today, about 160 of them, 
have engaged communities uh, in an area of about 6 million hectares where wildlife conservation um, is being undertaken and our work is to build that strong network where communities are at the center of protecting these wildlife. The areas in brown are the location of our conservancies and we do feel that um, the, the orange areas uh, need to grow a lot more because there is still a lot of wildlife that are not in the green area, which are our national parks, and also in the brown areas, which are our, our conservancies. Our main incentive we do feel is by involving communities. Uh, one of the challenges has been that communities do feel left out in well, wildlife conservation. They have histories where they feel that they were evicted out of their, of, out of their community land, and by bringing in them together to contribute to policies and contribute ideas, uh, many communities, and actually I came this morning from Magadi, where we were hold, uh, discussing issues of the national wildlife strategy, and the community is coming in for to say that if we are involved, we are willing and happy to coexist and to protect the wildlife. We are working to involve communities in participation from the tourism industry as guides, as leaders, as conservationists, managing their own land, and by doing so, uh, we feel that it is creating an opportunity for, for them to care and value the, the wildlife. We also uh, finally have a new Wildlife Act, uh, which came into effect in 2013 that has provided quite some um, significant um, uh, incentives to our communities. The recognition of conservancies uh, four years ago has been a major incentive. Recognition of wildlife conservation as a land use. Uh, many communities today are looking at how to manage wildlife, livestock, and other uh, compatible land enterprises on their land. And also the recognition of community wildlife associations uh, and the community rangers as, as, as part of the, the stakeholders that are involved in wildlife co uh, conservation. Our country has, is also expo exploring mechanisms for compensation because uh, we have had families, and yesterday I was being narrated a case where one family member lost uh, 49 sheep in one evening, and that represents such a significant loss to that family uh, and a, a significant loss to that livelihood. And, th and so through some form of consolation compensation programs, uh, our country is trying to work to uh, ensure that um, our communities are able to uh, live and support and, and, and protect the wildlife. Uh, involving communities in decision making, in retention of uh, benefits, is also an avenue that we are considering, uh, or rather using, uh, to create harmony between uh, wildlife and, and communities in community lands. Thank you very much for listening.